This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we finally have the last couple of radios we needed to get CBR, that's crossband repeater, number seven up and running so that we can have a spare kit out during the gravel route. But we also found a setting in the programming that was preventing the CBRs from receiving for more than 30 seconds, known as a timeout timer. We'll have to fix that. That's what's coming up this week on El Cara Ham Radio. So the only thing we really have left to do on the crossband repeater builds is repeater number seven. We were missing a UHF radio and we'd been scouring the web for an, an additional UHF. We already had the VHF model 121, but we didn't have any more with the display, the UHF 221s. And so we had a subscriber to the channel uh, message us and let us know that he had two of these and that he wouldn't mind sending them to us. And so Chris Lanko, uh, K2RIS, sent these two radios to us. So we've got a spare, and you can see Don is putting some solder on that pad so that the radio can be used in crossband repeat mode. Next, we're going to put it into uh, the, uh, the rack there, if you want to call it that, or the brackets. So we need to get the, uh, the radio mounted. Don is finishing up mounting it, and then we've got to test the cabling and so forth. So many of you have seen the, the repeater series that we've been doing here, this crossband repeater series. You're pretty familiar with all the parts. Just as a review, we have a 15 amp lithium ion battery. We have a master power switch. We have a, uh, this particular kit has a purpose built a voltmeter, amp meter with a shunt that we actually created from parts that we purchased. Then we have the two radios with the displays. We also have a distribution box just behind the, the uh, uh, voltage amperage display in the middle there. Of course, our logos on the board that we mounted everything to. And now Don is going to do some testing. Oh, testing. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Testing. AC 40 the frequency is in use. The frequency is in use. <laughs> I'm sorry, old man. We're out of here. That's why we're gone. <laughs> no problem. Feel free to use this one. That's where that cable is going into PPT now. So if we go to number six, which is ground, it should bring up this radio. Sounds like it's working, doesn't yep. it? So. So, looks like we wired that right anyway, so. 535. All right. Well, I am testing AC40, I'm testing 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, testing 1, 2, 3, testing 1, 2, 3, testing 1, 2, 3, testing 1, 2, 3, AC40, I'm testing. Yep, either. You know what, 3, 5, because I didn't have the the 147 frequency programmed in this radio. And I'm on 4457375, so somebody's crossbander is working. <laughs> <laughs> this one's working. You may not be hearing me there on it, but this one's working. What frequency are your VHF on up there? I can't test any further. Everything's working. <laughs> and with that, CBR7 is built but just needs to be programmed. Well, speaking of programming, we had a little glitch. So I had this particular CBR kit at Tiny Fangorn and I was testing it out. And we had a net the other night and everybody who was coming in, if they lasted longer than 30 seconds, the CBR would time out and uh, somebody was coming in or the UHF was transmitting to my radio while I was listening, the UHF radio would time out after 30 seconds. And Mike got into the software and found exactly what it was. On the VHF, we had the timeout timer essentially 
set to either three minutes or off completely, but we haven't done the exact same thing on the UHF radio. And you can see here, he's got that receive XO on, and that's because we're using it in crossband. But he's also got the timeout timers turned off. There's a timer A and a timer B. And this is part of what you get into when you're working with the radios, and sometimes from a programming standpoint, especially these commercial radios, they may have additional settings you're not used to. Uh, and so we had to get into the weeds a little bit on the programming, and then it was just a matter of sending the new programming over to the UHF radio, the same kit that I used that was timing out. This takes about uh, uh, 60 seconds to clone, probably not that, maybe 35, 40 seconds. It seems longer while we watch it here go through the numbers. But once the cloning process is complete, it'll beep at you, and then you have to turn it off, and then turn it back on to put it back into use. So we've gotten much, much better, especially Mike on the programming. So now we need to test to make sure that this radio is not gonna time out if we transmit VHF to UHF for more than 30 seconds. Let's say 40 second timer, right? Mm -hmm. Are you ready? KD6FTR testing, crossband repeaters. 30 second countdown begins. 35, 34, 33, 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27. Yeah, I'm not gonna say it anymore. So at this point we just hold down the uh the uh, transmit button on the VHF side and we're receiving on the UHF. Keep in mind the UHF is transmitting uh, and so we're just monitoring. Actually I'm monitoring on the VHF side but in any event um, it did not time out on us going in either direction and that's exactly what we wanted. So we've learned even more about some of the programming for these radios. So we've reprogrammed one of the kits and we tested it seemed to be fine. Now this is CBR number five and this was the crossband repeater that was timing out after 30 seconds and we just wanted to test it to see if in fact here in what we'll call control conditions it would do it again and sure enough it was acting weird. It would delay five seconds or so before even keying up and then it would time out after 30 seconds and so we were just going through the motions of does this uh, radio or the programming on one or both of the radios needed to be redone and the answer unequivocally was yes. Okay, here we go. It is going, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that answered a question I was wondering about. And you program it with VHF, even though it's a UHF radio. Well, it sat there and flashed. Yeah. So that was telling me, what you just did, ain't go on. No bueno. That's a new worky. All right. Now. Yeah, see, that's better. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Yeah, the two meter sign needs to be redone. So, there we go. Okay, so. Too high. Make sure we're on two meters. Hope that works. Ah, I'll just leave it there so we see that. And right. There she goes. How many changes do you think you made this morning? Um, power level, turned off timeout timer in each of the channels and in the common setting. Uh -huh. And then I also turned off in the common settings the, I think I made four total changes. Four. Yeah, there's this, there's guy. this auto reset I turned off. It was set for 30 right here. Right. Stupid thing. This one right here. So that one was set, you know, like it's a number, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's a zero, it's off. And so it was set to 30. And that's probably where the problem was. So that wraps up all seven of the crossband repeater builds. They're complete. The programming appears to be right where it needs to be. 
So where do we go from here? We need to get out in the field, folks, and we have a new location for the emergency communications trailer where the clerk of the course will be located, and we've got to test, make sure these crossband repeaters can get into that central location. So stay tuned for our next video. I'm KY4BDP for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching, and 73.